Alright, what's up everybody? It's been a while, um, but we're back here to play another standard game. So, I haven't been around doing chess videos, but I've been busy focused on other non-chess projects. But we're back in the pool today. I'll probably keep it around to do some of this every once in a while when I feel like it. Still am playing chess though. I guess I was doing some studying of end games, and it was helping my blitz game, and I reached a peak high of like 1770 a few weeks ago, and then somehow I took a few days off and sort of crashed to the ground and decided I need to slow down the time control, get back to classical, which I prefer anyway, so that's what we're going to be doing. Playing Mr. Free P01 here. Or misses, whatever. Let's do English. A little bit out of the ordinary, but still something I'm relatively comfortable with. We'll see how they respond. So 1663 looks like it's mainly a classical player. that we're facing. We'll see if we get something. Yep, this is an interesting response. I'm a little more used to either they usually play with e5, going for a reverse Sicilian type plan, or they'll go for e6 and try to counter me on the light squares, because the idea with the English is to get your knight out to c3, which I'll do anyways and then Fanchetto the light squared bishop and have light square control so they can try to play on the light squares and counter you that's what e6 would do to try to prepare d5 or they can play on the dark squares and just go light versus dark square control theme of the game and that's what it's looking like we're going to do I expected this move, I think. D6 just supports um, E5 a little bit better before doing it right off the bat, even though it doesn't really need support at the beginning. So, I wonder what the difference is uh, between how they would normally play. I don't think it affects my opening. I don't want to get too far down. So I'm just going to proceed as normal. One of the nice things about the English is that you can often just play these three moves against a lot of their tries. Because you're really not necessarily going into the center yourself too much at the beginning. I mean, you do stake out some space, but um, it's a little bit non-committal and you're not really... There's no tension. The two central pawns haven't been pushed, so you have your choice of where to go with those. And of course, another thing that it can do is it can transpose into a queen's gambit type position if you end up playing d4 within the first few moves. Like if they start on, on move 1 with e6, you can go d4 and transpose into Queen's Gambit. Or Peart's, I think, is that what it is? I'm not sure. If, but it's a Queen's Gambit if they then go d5. This must be, you know, I mean, they've played a lot of games. They must have faced this before. 
Okay, so just developing the bishop and attacking my pawn. I think against this, I want to just play d3. Solidify the pawn chain. If I wanted, I could even just go g2, actually, because they'll have to protect the b7 pawn. And if I take that, then I can just go ahead and take the rook afterwards, unless they move the knight. So they would have to address that threat. Is there anything tricky against that? I don't think so. Any in-between moves? g2... C4, B7. Nope. E2, just take with the queen. Same threats. Just proceed as normal. I mean, D3 is probably coming next move anyways, but... Hold off one more move. of one of the central pawns is just slightly more flexible. It's also worth noting that this A4 check is now in the works. And actually that might be a better way to counter bishop takes C4 just do the a4 chip and then grab up the bishop on the next move. So that pawn's safe for now. I wonder what setup I want though. Because I could also play b, b3 and go for a double fin finchetto setup b3 bishop b2 d4 to try to disrupt this pawn chain here which it would be blocking okay so they see the threat but the good news is that somewhat awkwardly makes it a little awkward for them to develop that knight there. Indeed, it looks like all their pieces are slightly cluttered. Whereas I don't think I have the same issue with my pieces. So, options. So, I do need to protect this pawn at this point. I'm pretty sure the more normal way to do that is with this pawn. And it is possible that I might play b4 in one fell swoop later. So, I'll keep that option open for now. Just developing makes sense. Bishop is bound for e7. Is there anything... because it looks like we're just going to both be able to develop just fine out of this. Is there anything challenging I can do, like f4? f4, pawn takes, pawn takes. It seems like it might be annoying for them to deal with. Do I worry about my backward e-pawn in that case? 
as well as king safety because their position doesn't have I mean the weakness is the d-pawn but I, I can't exploit that right now I don't think I could try d4 seems a little early though maybe it's best to just wait for now and make a plan against that d-pawn in the future So I'm going to do so next would be developing the dark squared bishop castling castling queenside is not out of the question I'm unsure of how good it will be though Pushing these queen side pawns is also not out of the question. I could potentially have more space there if I go before. Not sure I want to do that though. So if I do want my long-term plan to be um, ganging up on the d-pawn, how exactly am I going to start exerting pressure there? It seems like it's a long ways away. Putting a knight on e4, getting the bishop to b4, opening up this file, the d-file, for rooks and queens. So a d4 push would get that started. I'm not so sure it's the best idea. I don't know what they're thinking about now. Simply e bishop e7 should suffice. Be nice if I could play bishop g5, but since I fianchettoed this bishop, I don't really have an escape square. On h4 because I can't retreat to g3 if they push the pawns. That's something I learned in the uh, post-game analysis of one of the previous standard games I played. So my bishop's probably bound for d2. <laughs> yeah. It's looking like they're playing quite slow. So just castles, castles. Probably. Let's start with castles. Not exactly posing too many problems for them though. No exchanges so far. <laughs> Lots of yawning right now. I don't know why. I could also play knight d2 to e4. That would be a way to start pressurizing this point. 
Another thing I could do is before opening up the bishop to come this way if it wants to. An interesting thing is this bishop, dark squared bishop on e7, can't go anywhere. So if there's a way to snatch it with a knight, that'd probably be reasonable too. They're ready to push d5 if they want to. Which could potentially open up one of these files. So I feel like I need to develop and connect my rooks. To make sure that's not... Get my rooks to one of these files that's going to open up. I have a slight lead in development. Yeah. So I've got basically two options. I could take it or I could ignore it if I take it. They have lots of ways to recapture. But we could open up the C file, which I could get to first. So that seems like it would benefit me. So I would take in that case. But let's say takes, takes, rook c1, push. Oh, they don't want to push. Oh, they just dropped a pawn, didn't they? So what happens if I take this pawn? So take, take, take. Oh, if I take e5 and they take c4, I could take c4 with my knight. And now I'd be good to go. So, what about take and then bishop d6? I think I can hold on to it. Or what if I just take first? Yeah, taking first seems good. Because then I don't have to, because if I just take probably both good options. I think this is more likely that I get to keep the pawn. So I'm wondering about d6 or queen d6, attacking the knight, but then I can just go f4. And eventually solidify this pawn with b3. and hope to take advantage of this pawn later in the game. I'll have to see though, because c takes d5 was also looking pretty tempting. 
even without the hanging pawn. All my minor major pieces are well defended, besides this knight that just jumped in, so I'm happy about that. Hmm. I didn't consider that move. interesting staking out space well actually I don't know about this it's probably not that good because I have e4 which allows me to trade off these knights and I can always retreat my knight to f3 after that, if need be, where I would be attacking this. c5 is coming, though, I'm pretty sure. So they get a little more space, but they're down a pawn. But it's fine by me. Thing is, if they do play c5, it opens up this wide diagonal. No tricks, no funny business. In fact, they can't even play it right now. Oh, I see. I should have I should have seen that. Uh, because yeah, it blocks in. If I go retreat, then my bishop's trapped. So, what to do then? If I let him take, the pawns become super solidified. But I do want to keep my light squared bishop. It's going nice at this diagonal. It's, light squares are open. So. Desperado then, knight takes c6, I think it's the best I could do. Yeah, this is looking pretty nasty. At least this pawn is isolated. Still, there's no good way to attack it. I'm thinking B1, and try to push these pawns. Yeah, I don't want to get too far down in time, too. I 
I wonder how to get my queen effectively into the game. Because I also don't have... I need to use all my pieces. Might as well retreat. Shouldn't think too long about it. Still, they have seven minutes. So that's plenty of time to think and figure out a good plan. If they're feeling really cocky, they might even try to push g5. But I don't really know what that... I mean, they're going for all-out attack, but they don't have to do that. Trying to force an exchange. I definitely don't want to trade off these pieces. So I've got two options here. There's F4. And there's bishop, oh, no, the knight's here, so that's not an option. Yeah, four seems right. This holds them back in a lot of cases. And e2 is weak, but I can put my bishop on f3 if necessary. There should be plenty of defenders. One idea now is... Queen a4. Hmm. So with that... I feel they're trying for g5. Because otherwise this bishop's terribly placed. So if they want g5, I can either go h4 or queen c1. Queen c1 seems safer. But if queen c1, then what? Probably b4, b5. And then if I can get b5 in, I can bring the bishop out. Yeah, let's do it. I like all my pieces, actually despite the fact that I'm down material. It seems like, well, I've got more pawns, so activating my queenside pawns is probably where my compensation comes, so. Ooh, yeah, he's going... Going for that pawn. But the only way to attack it is with the rooks. So, f3, I can always play f3. If I want.
continue my plan. If they move the bishop away, so then I've got f3. And there was no discoveries that were dangerous that I could see. He could try something crazy like bishop c4, but I just take, and then he takes here and we're even material again. And then even after that I get f3, so seems harmless. I would welcome that. So now my thread is b5, followed I guess by bishop takes b7, then we're equal material, and I think my position's better. Okay, so now they open up the attack. So b5 to push the knight back. This is kind of cool actually. Because the spot they want to go, or the only two spots are e7, b8. Neither is that desirable, but e8 seems better. Okay. Maybe they're going to maneuver into c5. So I don't have much time. Just protect this pawn. Look at all their pieces on the back rank. And my pawns are marching forward. So all this bodes well. I've got to check if I won it. And the bishop's trapped here, protecting this pawn. How to get it out, I'm not sure. So the natural thing to do is to push the a-pawn, a4, a5, a6. If it gets to a6 and the position's the same, I, I think I win material, because this pawn's pinned. So they're going to want to push a6 at some point to challenge me. A a6 right now. Probably a4. Oh, reconnecting. What's going on? Is my internet bad? I hope not. Let's see. I guess I'll try to reload. Come on. Ah. Uh, this is unfortunate. Let's go.
Mm-hmm. I bet you timed out by now. Glad there's, I'm still in the game, but I don't have any time left. I'll tell them I lost connection there. Yeah, that all makes sense. Let's just pay some moves to give me some time. Actually, in this case, well, that was a blunder by them. So let's go ahead and try to force a queen trade. Yeah. Sorry about that. The connection sometimes goes out. I had to restart the router. Oops. There we go. So should be able to get the queens off the board. Now I've got plenty of time. And I don't think I want to touch this tension here. I think I want to get rid of this pawn and open up some spots for my rook. I know they can take and get their rook in the game this way. But so be it. In fact, now, if they don't do anything, I can play rook a1, trade rooks. It's kind of interesting material. I'm down in exchange, but I've got a lot of pawns for it. 7 versus 5. So I've got a rook and two pawns versus two pieces. The good news for me is these pieces are not yet activated, but my pawns are looking nice. Still no good way to activate the pieces for them. So I don't think I want to trade this rook yet, actually, even if they give me the option. Because this file is kind of useless if my first only rook left is on the A, A file. I'm not sure what good it's doing. I guess I'm threatening A8 to win one of these pieces. They can easily get out of that. So 
they want to keep the rook. So I'll go ahead and try to open up a scope for my rook here. Doubling on the e-file would be good. It's access to a lot of the board. Okay. Not sure that helps them. Not too much time to think anyways. Simple plan. D3 is unprotected, so Does that not lose material? It's getting kind of crazy, but I think I win something with this. Rick C7 forced, as far as I can tell. Just simple, simple playing. Rick F7 is looking pretty crushing. F8, I mean. Yeah, this ended up being good. I got kind of lucky. I feel bad that it seemed like they were rushing their moves because they noticed I only had 40 seconds left because of the connection problem. But that's a thing, right? You shouldn't... If your opponent's low on time, you have plenty of time. You kind of are pressured to use your time to get them to lose on time. Yeah. This move makes sense. But you don't want to do that because you'll end up making a blunder when you don't have to. Okay, so against this... I suppose I should just double up on the eighth rank. Yeah. Oh, did I miss something? I think I missed something. Yeah, I had something better there, but it's okay. Because it still wins material too. Take the 
three piece. There's nowhere for the bishop to go really. So next I just take this pawn and push the pawns. Actually against this, yeah, take the pawn, force the king away. And I have to be careful because I think they want to go g7, but if they do that I get b7 and I get the bishop too. So yeah, this one's another bishop because if they don't do that I take this bishop on h6. probably annoyed by that game. I feel kind of bad. But that's... these things happen. Alright, so... I'm disappointed in how I handled that free pawn, but I ended up having nice compensation for the piece afterwards, so I'm happy with my decision to take that other pawn. Because this diagonal ended up proving to be really useful especially since I had all these pawns over here. So, so far I'm happy. I think I played the opening well, although I wonder if there was a way to play it a little more forcefully, because it seemed like they were able to just develop all their pieces naturally, and I would guess that this is pretty much just an equal position to play out of. That's okay, though. All this was fine up to here. So my other option was to take. It's just that if this pawn is not hanging, I can just take. They take either way, any of the three ways, and I can just play bishop c1. And it's probably pretty good for me. I could even play take. Anything takes and then e5. But instead I took... I didn't realize this wasn't possible. So here I would have to take with this pawn. That doesn't seem so good for me. Maybe it's okay. But... I wouldn't have been, I'm not that happy with this. Okay, so I have to worry about him pushing because my knight doesn't have anywhere good to go because the other two squares are out, out of the picture, really. So in that case, taking, how about takes, 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 and then I think I run into the same problem. This is a good find. I think I have the same problem pretty much in all the variations. So maybe it is best to ignore the pawn. We'll see. Still, this was interesting imbalance of material here. I'm happy with all of this. Happy with that for sure. Happy with that. Happy with that. Happy, very happy with that. So here they definitely need to go back. 
I guess what they're annoyed at is that I'm going to be able to win this pawn back. Because if they play h8, then I get to play queen b7. And there's no way to protect this pawn. So probably the queen move was bad because it blocks the bishop from coming here. So what I expected to be a, just a waiting move to gain more time ended up being probably the best move on the board. That's luck. <laughs> here just trying to force the exchange of queens after the winning back the exchange. This is a bad move, I think. I think they had to play knight d7 to get it in here. This would have been, c5 would have been a nice square for the knight. Because I've just got a light squared bishop and two rooks, how am I going to kick it out of here? And, I mean, not so much in the sense of, it's not really covering that much great, great material, but the pieces are so clogged here that it's a better position than it's in now. Also, probably g6 needed to be played to get this bishop back in the game. And treating the bishop was probably a mistake. So here, I actually should have played... I had checkmate, didn't I, if I had played rook f8? Because now that this rook's on the e-file, no treat squares for the king. So I have to block with the rook, but then my bishop and my rook control f7. And this was unfortunate again. The king is pinned skewer the king and the bishop. And then if the king runs back to attack, we pin the bishop to the king and we win another piece. Okay. So besides a few moves, I played a good game, I think. But I missed some key moves. That should have lost me the game, I think. Oh, one more thing I wanted to check is... So how to, actually... This is a nice tactical, tactical find, I think. It's pretty clever. So how to proceed from here? What would have been better for black? Probably bishop here into b4. Yeah, that would have forced a trade of the light squared bishop. Well, I could have moved back to c1. It's hard to say. Because then I've got a lot of pawn moves with tempo. Could at least try it. Maybe move the bishop back after that even. Since they have the pieces, they want to coordinate the pieces and use their force to eventually win more material. I wonder if they have the right idea of going after the light squared bishop, because that's my best piece. Maybe it would have been better with something like queen d7, and then chasing it along this diagonal. That would also connect the rooks, and it would also protect b7. Yeah, maybe some long-term plan like that, trading off the light squared bishops and trying to use remaining pieces to overpower the pawns.
Yeah, that's what the computer's saying. Cool. So yeah, all this is fine. And yep, at this point, it's pretty much dead equal. So yeah, the computer is going back and forth between them, these two moves. So with my move and this move, hmm. Okay, but what about this? Uh, huh? Oh, this is too tactical. So now I fork these two pieces. Uh, in between move to protect the knight. Well. Yeah, I never would have seen that. Okay, so what if I am forced to go back here? I still have a slight advantage, they say. I would have taken this position, I think, if I had even seen all the tactics. But the other option is to take first. And then my two thoughts were to take or to play rook c1. Let's see rook c1. Yeah, but they're getting this in. And this, protecting this. So I didn't really think about d4 ever, really. I should have considered it when I was calculating these lines. So here, still here, and what about this, ah, uh, that's right, because now that all these pieces are gone, I'm attacking b7. That's pretty hard to see. Okay, so the idea is to take here. This weakens this pawn, so if they do push this, this pawn's wide open. Anyways, it's tricky. No matter what happens, it's tricky. Yeah, I had to take with the pawn. That would have been better. I just didn't see what's going on. I should, at this point, I should have seen, I think. Really? This move? Let's say they take. Yeah. And then here? Oh, I get both these pawns. I believe we're even material at this point. Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. But then I win the exchange right away. This stuff's crazy. I definitely didn't see all those possibilities. Computer approves of my play. Computer approves of my play. What about their play? Yeah. 
this move makes a lot of sense to stop my b4, which definitely means I'm on the right track with my thinking. And yes, another mistake here. Definitely want to keep the bishop in the game. Because if they don't get this g5 plan in, as what happened in the game, the bishop's stuck. Peter's saying that even ignoring their threat. So what happens? I just go right away and they do this. Just keep going. Attack this. I don't know why they would do that. I would do this. Ah. Uh, because it blocks the queen. So what about here? Still. Hmm. Yeah, there's nowhere good to go with this knight goes here it blocks the queen from this attack. If it goes here then I can gang up on it and it's trapped. And if it goes here this pawn's gone and the rook's gone. Okay so they have to respond to that. So g5 not really something I had to respond to. Saying to continue to push. What's the idea? Get my queen into the game? What about this? Mm, win another pawn. Okay. So the, the idea behind pushing is to try to win this pawn, I guess. It's kind of weird. I liked having everything closed off. And if they go here, then yep, I'm going to win this pawn back. It's tricky though. Just a totally tactical game at this point, but it's pretty much lost for them. And yep, like I said, they needed to develop the knight, get it here. It's pretty much lost at this point. And that's pretty much the game. So, thanks for watching.